Tonight, live from a yogurt shop in Chicago, we have a special guest, J.C. Narvey, for episode 215 of... A W M Radio. Press a fade, wasn't it, Thomas? Yeah. yeah yes, I like, well. I like the sound effects that you all put in there for my voice, because that's impossible to do just regularly as a human. People can't yeah. make those high of sounds. They just can't do it. Without a lot of training, at least. Uh, that's trained, Nick. Tra- I'm, I'm impressive, I'm, Logan. Tra- uh, Nick. Tom was the second voice you heard. We're here at Tall Tale <laughs> Coffee slash Serve Yourself. Uh, the machines are kicking in. Uh, the second episode is kicking on. And we are kicking off. Yeah. Yay! All right. Woo! All right. Doesn't, doesn't mean anything. <laughs> Here with us today is a special guest, an actor known for his role as Eugene Skull Scullavunch from the Power Rangers television series spanning from 1993 to 2012. Give it up for Jason Narvey. Yeah. Woo! Woo! <laughs> <laughs> you, you were so annoying in that show, man. Wow. Good God. God. How no, like your nights like that. You know what? I really hated your freaking guts between 1993 to 2012. No, you. <laughs> that's a long time to hate some woman. I did not hate you. I envied you because I was like, look at that skinny white dude playing like a nerdy like bully role. I wanted to play that role, and we're about the same age. Yeah, so about the same age. We're yeah. about skinny. We're both. Well, I hate to tell you, brother, you're white. I'm white. white. I am white as the floor You had to learn this wooden. way <laughs> in um, a podcast. But I am not your biggest fan. Uh, I'm a very big fan. I used to watch Power Rangers, you know, kind of yeah, off yeah, and on. Yeah. I love the show. But this guy here knows more about Power Rangers than anyone that I know. It makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> Good God. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, the, the making us uncomfortable may be a separate issue. Maybe yeah, that's, that's true. Just an yeah, ongoing. That thing. Yeah. Power Again, it people can't unrelated. see what we're doing here. I probably should not put my hands there. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> probably <laughs> not. I thought. Probably not. Be careful. But tell me, when did you when did you move to Chicago? When, well, actually, no. Rewind. When did mm-hmm. you leave the show? What happened after the television series? I and you decided left to move on. The show to go to college. Oh, yeah. <laughs> believe it or not, being an idiot. Doesn't make you any smarter. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it validates you though. It completely validates you. Like, I don't need to go to college. I'm doing, I'm doing the active thing. I'm on television and I'm an idiot. And my character is an idiot. Why learn anything? It's only going to ruin your character, right? <laughs> what did you go to college for? Uh, I actually was trying to get away from Hollywood for a while to get, to kind of get my head on. Yeah. Quite frankly, I mean, Power Rangers become this, this big. Freaking thing at the beginning of, yeah. you know, we, nobody expected it. And we thought six months of work, we were really excited. And then suddenly <laughs> we realized people were making a fortune on it. We're like, yeah, wow, that, cha- that was a game changer. Super big franchise. Yeah, huge franchise. You know, m- remember the first year how, like, nobody could get, um, what, the, the, nobody could get the costumes for Halloween. And there was a shortage mm-hmm. of the toys. And everyone thought it was a conspiracy. Uh-uh. <laughs> no, we didn't think anyone would want the toys. We didn't think anyone would want it. Enough to go around. It wasn't enough to go around. That's all it came down to. So I, I quit the show to get my head on, and I'm like, you know what? I'm not doing acting. And in fact, I hid away from California as much as I could. I went to college in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Okay, I'm that's like, pretty far. far. Away, yeah. Pretty far. I mean, if I wanted to become Amish, I'm good, okay? <laughs> if I wanted to be anything else, maybe a Mennonite. Maybe a Mennonite. Other than that, no. How but, far away from theater did you stay? Did you did you did you you didn't go to college for acting? Did what you did do you go stage to plays for? before that? You did. Well, here's the deal. Well, no. So I stayed away. I, I stayed away from the theater department for about 35 seconds because <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot of student directed work. So I, a lot of students are like, "Hey, come get involved," and because these kids were so like like doing some of the best theater I've ever seen yeah. because, you know, young college students with a lot of time on their hands, a lot of booze, and they really want to break all the rules. I'm like, <laughs> that's where I'm at. So I spent all my time in the theater there, and that's when I decided I wanted to go into higher ed. So then after that, rather than going back to acting, I started a theater company in New York. I got my master's, uh, uh, Master of Letters uh, in Shakespeare with the American Shakespeare Center. Uh. Then I went and got my Ph.D. at University of California, Santa Barbara. Then I came to Chicago. Well, look wow. at you getting an education. <laughs> so now you I have all that energy, between. and you you can choose different directions to throw it. That's right. Well, yes, I can throw stuff all over the place. But there, I mean, there's a there's a real kind of Freudian thing out there that the dumbest guy on the show goes out 
and gets a doctorate. Don't you think <laughs> that's a little overcompensation? You know, you see the guy with a big car, you're like, okay, buddy, I know what's going on south of the equator, right? <laughs> it's hotter down there. It's hotter down there. <laughs> and you should see a doctor. He will alleviate the burning sensation. So we're going to come back to a fun fact after that where I don't reveal my recent trip to Howard Brown because now it is time for a fun fact with Logan. Fun fact, before it was named August, the month had been known as Sextilis, as it was the sixth of ten months in the Roman calendar, which, beca- which began with March. The Anglo-Saxons called it, uh, called August Weodemonth. No, I didn't pronounce that right. Let me try it again. Weodemonth. <laughs> ah, <laughs> meaning weed it's month. sensual. <laughs> That's very Anglo-Saxon. He's the sexuality. <laughs> All those Anglo-Saxons running around with their sexual words Anglo-sex. like bread. <laughs> <laughs> so try to give it a little collegiate spin because you are the chair of the theater department at Concordia University. Correct. Correct. And how long have you been sitting in that chair, sir? Well, we became our own department about uh, a year and a half, two years ago. So I was the, I am the founder, the first chair of the university oh, department of very theater. Nice. Before that, I was just artistic director of the program of, known as theater. Well done. Right. Let's plug some of your recent <laughs> credits. What What have you done recently? I know what's mm-hmm. well, I know what's coming up, and we'll get to that later. But yep. what have you done recently that you just finished? Uh, we just closed a show called In the Soundless Awe. We got Jeff recommended. It was the retelling of the. Oh, you heard about this? I heard. Of, oh yeah. Oh, there you are over there. Yeah. I, I wasn't sure if someone was the, trapped in the, the yogurt echo dispenser. In the room. Going, <laughs> yeah, I heard about oh, it. Yes. Oh, I'll, I'll say anything. Oh, get me out of the yogurt oh, dispenser. Oh, um, that one was really cool, actually, because uh, it's about the sinking of the USS Indianapolis um, at the end of World War II. The Indianapolis, unbeknownst to most people, actually delivered the A bomb to the Americans. Like it had key components, and I think the body of it. Uh, all the plutonium in the world at that point was on the USS Indianapolis. It was delivered to Japan, and then the U- Indianapolis was sunk, where it sat oh. in the wa- where the survivors of the torpedoing sat in the water for five days. In the meantime, not only were they suffering from the initial uh, injury sustained from the blast and exposure, they started getting eaten by sharks. Oh, oh wow! No, yeah, at that yeah. point, that, I mean, yeah. So we we did that show. Uh, uh, about that uh, just closed uh, about two weeks ago. Now the weird thing about it, uh, we, this that was, was pretty weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah pretty, pretty weird to begin okay. with. Uh, this was uh, Saltbox Theater Collective. This was their first uh, Chicago theater. Uh, 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 Chicago. Th- they actually did it. They used to work out of the same theater where I met. Who did Tom? Tom. Uh, Saltbox oh, Theater Collective yeah. at Madison Street Theater. Yeah. Um, so th- we had to build a whole pool on stage. So we're like, this this uh, show is never going to fly. Wow. Well, as it turns out. The people um, from the U.S. Uh, people uh, uh, who run the USS Indianapolis um, website and the uh, uh, survivor uh, uh, reunions found out about the show. So we actually had the survivor come see the show. Wow. We had family members come see the show. The granddaughter of the Japanese submarine commander who sank the ship came to see the show. Um, the last captain of a ship named the Indianapolis um, who got the captain of the World War II Indianapolis exonerated because he had been put up on charges for allowing his ship to be torpedoed for some God only knows reason. <laughs> he came to see the show too. So this show actually had gained some very strange momentum and it may actually be restaged next year at the Indianapolis m- reunion oh, for yeah, the man. survivors. Cool. All right, wow. Pretty cool stuff. I think yeah. that deserves a round of applause. Yeah. yeah. Historically Fabulous. relevant. Quite the stretch away from superheroes in near yeah. spandex. Yeah, I didn't mean to bring that. It was a, it was a comedy show until I brought that up. But we're going to bring it back to that. But prior to playing our game segment, uh, we need a volunteer from the audience to face off against someone yeah. who may be absolutely brilliant or may be absolutely terrible at this game. And it looks like <laughs> it's going to be that lovely lady. And go. if she's coming on up, since she has a little romance with this man named Tom, uh, Tom, do you hey, have any questions specific to episodes about something that you thought was odd or unique? I'm just amazed that you haven't asked any type of Power I mean, Rangers. I already know Pope a lot Reed. about Power Rangers, as we've already said. So you everything. can't tell him anything. <laughs> All right, he fine. Let's play a game. Know. All right. Are we ready? Let's play a game. Rangers, would defeat the awesome monster? 
baddies or bands. Special thanks to Grid for that intro. Wow, I love the way you slipped that in there. Yeah, I'm like it would have been do. real, like real smooth <laughs> if I hadn't have pointed it out. Uh, so this game is called Baddies or Bands. You go one at a time. I'm gonna give you two mm-hmm. names, and you mm-hmm. tell me which is the baddie and which is the band. Why did the you baddie say it would like be from Power Rangers? Mark. The okay. baddie? The baddie? <laughs> oh, I think my voice cracked. Okay. <laughs> <Going through two. laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. You're, be- you're becoming a lovely young woman. It's time to change. <laughs> so, uh, let's see. Uh, who wants to go first? I go, I'll go. Okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> Please are you speak into the microphone. I'm going to do it first. in character. That's great. Oh, oh yeah, what, what, what is your bit. name, uh, kind audience guest? Hi. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> my name, I'm Joanna. <laughs> okay, great. All right. All right, uh, Joanna. <laughs> Joanna, that's just right. being dr- real. Drug that Yeti off the mic. <laughs> uh, Joanna, here we go. First one, Rasputina or Serpentina? Ooh. Which one's the baddie? Which one's the band? Uh, say it again. Rasputina or Serpentina? Serpentina. Uh, what, what? <laughs> I feel like Serpentina would be the the baddie. That is correct. Yeah. Ooh. One point. Okay, okay, well played. Right. Well played. One point. First point. All right. Uh, Jason, rotor hog or hydro hog? <laughs> oh. <laughs> You got two different hogs to choose from, buddy. Man, they gave you the softball, and I get that <laughs> that Nolan Ryan fastball right in between the oh, eyes. Oh, you know, I Rusty beg to Tina. differ. I beg to differ. I knew this one. And okay, I go know. ahead. Try this one again. Rotor hog or hydro hog? I mean, I know the answer. You do not. <laughs> I do. You're I'm going to go with rotor hog. Is it what? Batty or the band? Oh, man. I didn't know. <laughs> 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 that's the question. That's the batty. Incorrect. Oh, <laughs> I remember oh. Hydra Hog. Duh. We're gonna have, we're gonna have to tell everybody it about was, this. It, one of those villains they killed. Really? Their special sword. You just described I, every villain. Every I episode. Hydra <laughs> <of them. laughs> Hog. Okay. Yeah, Hydra Hog was the baddie. Rotor Hog was the band. Joanna, Queen Machina or Queen Obscene? This is an easy Ooh. one. Ooh. 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 Oh. Same uh, again. <laughs> Queen Machina or Queen Obscene? Why is that easy? Queen Machina because or Queen Obscene? She was the villain what? for a whole season. Okay, okay. That's for enough oh, help. So, what? That's okay. enough help here. I'm not helping. Oh, so, She's oh, in the lead already. Oh, oh, the oh, Yeti I got punched. I think, I think there's a little bit of, we'll call it Russian voting going on here. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Tom, blink twice. <laughs> I'm not going to help you, too. Just, uh, just do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, going one. <laughs> oh, shoot. Going I forgot twice. the names again. Queen Who Machina or Queen Obscene? No, no, same again. Queen Machina or Queen Obscene? Batty okay, or Okay, Queen Machina is the villain. That's correct. Damn it. Oh. Yeah. Two for two. Oh, it seems oh, like you're cheating. We're cheating now, but we're not. I didn't know <laughs> that. Well, I wonder, I wonder why. <laughs> uh, Here we go. Moving on. Jason, second question. Yeah. Metal Crunch or Metal Alice? Mm. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> I know. I'm going to say Metal Alice is the baddie. That's correct. Woo! All right. Good point. All right. Coming well back. Well played. Coming back. Last question for each of you. Uh, what are we? One one. I think uh, no, so. two, one. Two. Two, one. two two one. Two one. Two one. Oh, two one. Joanna. Two one. Scoreboard's dim from here. Two one. Uh, Joanna. Korag, the night wolf, Oof. or a wolf witch, and I can spell those if you want. No. <laughs> All right. Mm. <laughs> wolf witch is a band. That correct. is correct. Oh, yeah. That is correct. The heat I mean, is that, on. that right there, that, that, that is a. Uh, what is that alarm for cheating? Or? Should we evacuate? What's going on? Just, just let it happen. <laughs> just let, let it happen. happen. <laughs> That's our new easy subtext. Oh, awesome. Let it happen. Just let it happen. <laughs> that's that's the first time we ever played the perfect brew baker from Brad Brewbaker, our winningest contestant yeah. ever. Oh! <laughs> Joanna, you've gotten I a ran perfect. I to Brad Brewbaker today. That is fate. well, no one cares. It's no, it's a real synchronicity. It's not fate. <laughs> okay, 
So, right. uh, so that's I mean that's three on? that's three points, but just for pride, Jason. For pride, just I for pride. Pride. pride Did you see my this. character on that show? <laughs> <laughs> Every episode you were covered in food. <laughs> <laughs> it's covered in food, and then I was covered in Paul Schreier, right it, on top. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's hard to be the perfect brew baker, but Catherine Hillard or Paul Hewson. Oh wait, one more time. Catherine Hillard or Paul Hewson. And I will say this, since, since who knows what Tom's been doing over there, I will say... He's going to, he's going to get this one. Okay. I think he's going to get this okay. one. Okay. You think I'm going to get Okay. Catherine Hillard or Paul Hughes. Catherine's a bad Tom, Tom told me not to, to, to cheat with you, but actually... <laughs> just you just got it correct! Yay! Yeah. Yeah. All right. We right. so like going out right on a win. A pink ranger as well. Thanks so much to our audience member for playing. And don't forget to check out Jason Narvey in A Winter's Tale coming up November 10th through 11-19th at Concordia University. Thanks so much. Thank you. It was a pleasure. It was a pleasure. Did you have a good time? Oh, man. I've never had more fun than I'm currently having right now. What did you think when you were coming to a yogurt store for this, though? My, what are you kidding me? I used to go to a damn juice bar every day at 6 a.m. for 12 hours. What do you think I thought about it? Nice. It was yeah. a sound Power Rangers. <laughs> cool. Sweet.